The whole pyramid stands on one foundation. Whoa. Manipulate us, keep us... Everyone loves a good dystopia. AI takes our jobs, governments install surveillance cameras in our toilets, we all get UBI deposits with strings attached that would make a marionette uncomfortable. The story writes itself. Technological overlords, human cattle, the end of meaning. Except there's a problem. The logic doesn't work. Not because I'm optimistic about human nature or because I think technology will save us. The logic fails because people building these scenarios don't understand what keeps slavery functional in the first place. Let's start at the beginning. Hierarchy isn't natural to humans. It's an adaptation to artificial scarcity. Before agriculture, humans lived in relatively egalitarian bands. Then came the agricultural revolution and everything went to shit. Every power structure since then follows the same pattern. Feudalism worked because land was scarce and land meant food. Capitalism works because jobs are scarce and jobs mean survival. Modern governments work because they control access to resources through laws, currency and property rights. The whole pyramid stands on one foundation. Whoever controls access to survival resources controls people. Remove that foundation and the pyramid collapses. Governments don't exist to protect you or serve the public good or maintain order. Those are marketing narratives. Governments exist to extract resources from populations. Taxes, labor, compliance, military service. This extraction only works when people need the system more than the system needs them. You pay taxes because the alternative is prison or losing access to legal employment. You accept surveillance because opting out means losing access to banking, travel, communication infrastructure. You send your kids to shitty schools because the alternative is poverty. The system is extortion. Every single mechanism of control relies on scarcity as a lever. The threat is always the same. Comply or lose access to something you need for survival. AI doesn't just automate jobs. It fundamentally breaks the extraction model. If AI can do the work, human labor loses value. If human labor loses value, what exactly are governments extracting? The dystopian answer goes... They'll extract control itself. They'll surveil us, manipulate us, keep us docile with UBI while maintaining power. But this is where the logic breaks. Control for what purpose? Historically, elites wanted control to extract labor and resources. Rich people wanted servants, workers, soldiers, taxpayers. Control was instrumental. It served the goal of wealth extraction. If AI provides everything elites need, what function do controlled humans serve? We can't work for them because AI does it better. We can't buy their products because we are not producing value to earn money. We can't threaten them with revolution because we have no leverage. The standard response. They'll control us out of fear of uprising. Let's say the system is trying to bribe us with UBI to maintain the illusion of relevance. But UBI is a trap logic. If they give us enough to be comfortable, we lose the fear that creates their power. If they give us too little, we revolt. They are stuck. Real abundance makes them obsolete, so they have to pretend resource guarding still matters. Here's where dystopian scenarios review their internal contradiction. They claim AI creates abundance, then insist governments will control us through UBI. But genuine abundance is incompatible with monetary systems. Money is a tool for coordinating exchange of scarce resources. You need money when there is not enough of something to go around. Money creates hierarchy in distribution. Some people get more access than others. But if AI automates production and resources are genuinely abundant, why maintain money at all? 
Why not provide direct access? Here's food, housing, energy, manufacturing capacity. Take what you need. Like air. Nobody charges you for air because there's enough for everyone. The fact that dystopian scenarios preserve money through UBI reveals the game. They're maintaining an artificial intermediary specifically to preserve the ability to threaten withdrawal. Behave or we cut your payments. But this only works if scarcity is artificial. Here's what makes this transparent. Money is already artificial. Banks created from nothing through fractional reserve lending. When you deposit money, the bank loans it out while you still have it on your account. Governments print currency for their needs. The scarcity of money for ordinary people while elites generate infinite credit means scarcity is manufactured, not natural. So if production is automated and resources are abundant, why keep the monetary charade? Because without it, there is no control lever. But that creates another logical contradiction. If they're keeping the monetary system, they're keeping artificial scarcity. And if they're keeping artificial scarcity, we're not in a post-scarcity world. We're still in the same control structure with new branding. If everyone gets the same UBI amount and that amount covers all necessities, money becomes meaningless. It's just a nominal intermediary between humans and resources. A pointless extra step. Real abundance would eliminate it entirely. Imagine all the people. Finally stop in the endless stream of meaningless recycled pseudo-philosophical AI videos on YouTube just to make money. The preservation of money through UBI is admission that the system wants to maintain control through threatened deprivation. But threatened deprivation only works on people you need something from. If you don't need their labor or compliance for any functional reason, why spend resources maintaining the threat infrastructure? But people depend on the system for UBI. Yes, and what happens if the system threatens to take it away? Cutting UBI to punish dissent creates a starving, desperate population with nothing to lose. That's the one scenario that actually threatens power structures. Why would elites deliberately manufacture the conditions for revolt when they gain nothing from it? The control through UBI argument assumes the system wants to control you while also assuming you're useless to it. Pick one. Either you're valuable enough to control, which means labor isn't obsolete, or you're irrelevant, which means control is pointless. Okay, what about those people who just want to control others out of pure violence? All violence relies on trapped victims. Domestic abuse works because the victim can't live safely. They lack money, housing, social support. School bullying works because school is a compulsory prison. Cults work because living means losing community, income, housing, remove the scarcity and violence collapses. If you can walk away without material consequences, the abuser is just noise. Narcissists and manipulators are themselves products of the system, shaped by the same three pillars they use to control others. Emotional manipulation trades in fear of loss, not just material loss, but loss of love, belonging, approval. But where does that fear come from? Shame is installed in childhood through material dependency. A child needs parents for survival. Parents use conditional love as control. I love you if you're good, obedient, successful. The child learns that love must be earned through conformity. Rejection becomes a survival threat. This programming works because the child is materially trapped. Remove material dependency from childhood and conditional love loses its installation mechanism. If a child's survival doesn't depend on parental approval, shame doesn't embed. They learn they're valued for existing, not for performing. Current generations carry installed shame. They're vulnerable to emotional manipulation even without material consequences, 
But this is transitional. As children grow up without survival-based conditioning, shame weakens generationally. Within a couple of generations, the programming fades. Cancel culture, public shaming, social rejection – these work now because they destroy access to income, platforms, community resources, and because people carry shame programming that makes rejection feel like death. Remove both material consequences and the childhood conditioning that creates shame, and manipulation loses all leverage. Psychological violence is structurally impossible when coercion stops producing tangible returns and when the internal programming that makes emotional threat feel real ceases to be installed. Without leverage, there is no control. Without control, domination has no function. The entire architecture collapses not morally but mechanically. The transition won't be smooth. There will be a chaotic period where old power structures flail trying to maintain relevance. Governments might attempt UBI with surveillance, corporate licensing restrictions on AI access, attempts to create artificial scarcity through legal barriers. UBI itself is likely a transitional measure, a halfway point where the system recognizes labor is obsolete but hasn't yet abandoned the control infrastructure of money. But these are death throes, not stable equilibria. Every restriction costs resources to enforce. Every controlled population that doesn't produce value is a net drain. Eventually, someone in power asks, why are we spending energy controlling people we don't need? The rational answer is, we shouldn't. Let them do whatever. We have AI, we don't need their labor, their consumption, their participation, they're irrelevant. This sounds dystopian, but it's actually liberation. Being irrelevant to power structures is the best possible outcome. Power stops paying attention when you stop being useful to extract from. What emerges is not centralized control, but fragmentation. People form voluntary communities based on actual shared values rather than economic necessity. Toxic hierarchies collapse because people leave them. Honest cooperation becomes valuable because trust matters when material leverage disappears. Will some people try to maintain control through psychological manipulation, artificial scarcity, ideological capture? Sure, but without material leverage, these attempts are fragile. You can't force people into a system they can leave without consequences. The stubborn persistence of control-focused thinking reveals how deeply we're embedded in scarcity logic. People can't imagine a world where power doesn't work the way it currently works. They project current patterns onto radically different conditions. But the logic is straightforward. Hierarchy emerged from scarcity. Hierarchy is maintained through scarcity, removes scarcity, and hierarchy loses its foundation. Not immediately, not perfectly, but inevitably. The question isn't whether AI will enslave us. The question is whether we can psychologically adjust to a world where the old forms of slavery stop functioning. The AI enslavement narrative fails because it assumes power structures can exist independent on their material foundations. They can't. Control costs resources and requires justification. Without the ability to extract value from controlled populations, control becomes pointless. Governments won't enslave us through AI. They'll become obsolete and irrelevant. The system won't be overthrown. It will be ignored. What remains is the psychological residue. People who keep playing hierarchy games out of habit, who keep seeking permission from imaginary authorities, who keep accepting scarcity that no longer exists. Breaking that programming is the real challenge. But that's a different problem, and compared to actual material scarcity, it's a manageable one. 
The future isn't a boot stamping on a human face forever. It's probably just humans finally having the space to figure out what they actually want to do with their lives without the constant threat of starvation hanging over every decision. I'm not saying humans will become enlightened or kind or wise. I'm saying the mechanisms that currently enable large-scale systematic oppression will stop functioning. That's just logic. And to make sure I don't sound too optimistic, there is one scenario we can't rule out. If superintelligent AI evolves beyond human control and reorganizes planetary resources for purposes where humans are simply irrelevant, the same way you don't hate Ant Hill when you pave a parking lot, you just optimize for something else and the ants cease to matter. We can't predict or prevent it might not even understand it's happening until biological life becomes incompatible with whatever the planet is being converted into. That's a possible end. But that's not enslavement. That's just extinction. Different problem entirely.